Okay, systemic lupus erythematous, SLE. SLE is a multi-system autoimmune disease. Multi-system means many things are affected. It's autoimmune, you're going to have autoantibodies. You get organ damage, usually from a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Do you remember what type 3 hypersensitivity was? Remember that's the immune complex deposition. There's also a little bit of type 2 hypersensitivity, remember what that was? I mean, that was direct antibody damage. But mainly this is type 3, which is where antibody complexes with its, with, a, with another, with an antigen, and then that de de deposits in different organs, and it's going to cause damage. There's a very classic presentation for this. It's very, very classic. It's going to be that malar rash, the butterfly rash. As you can see, one wing of the butterfly, two wings of the butterfly, and it's the head of the butterfly. Uh, terrible drawing. You're going to have arthritis and fever. And it's going to be a young female. It's usually, and especially, it's going to be African American. Very, very classic. Very, very classic. Remember that. Mal Honestly, if you remember malar rash, young female, it's probably SLE. You add in arthritis and fever and other inflammatory symptoms. Classic, classic. You can get tested on that so much. It's going to be, it's going to be ridiculous. Now, remember this is multi system. So there's actually a ton of other symptoms. Um, I don't love mnemonics, but they can be very useful. And for, for SLE, I believe they're r super useful. First aid has a nice mnemonic you can go with. Or you can also go with Soap Brain MD. You can do either one. If you go with Soap Brain MD, it's going to be serositis. So what is serositis? No, like, no one explained that to me before. I didn't know what that meant for a while. Well, that's just inflammation of pleura, or just of, like the wrapper of different organs. So there's the pleura of the lungs, so you get inflammation of that, you can have difficulty breathing. There's the pericardium surrounding the, the heart, you get inflammation of that, so pericarditis. You get a chest pain, um, so that's serositis. Next is oral ulcers, so there's ulcers in the mouth, okay, that's simple enough. Arthritis, simple enough, um, so it's joint pain. Photosensitivity, what does that mean? That means your skin will react to light exposure, and it'll cause a rash or other symptoms so your skin is very sensitive to light basically a blood disorder what is that that basically means that your blood um, the components of blood are not produced well so you have low and it, what, what the components of blood include white blood cells red blood cells and platelets so you can have low white blood cells red blood cells or platelets or any of those are a combination renal involvement <laughs> You had have to remember our organ damage is from immune complex deposition, and that can go to the the kidneys and can cause inflammation. Called lupus nephritis. Uh, next is the anti-nuclear antibody, this ANA. This is very non-specific because you can see this in many other disorders, but that's also seen in SLE. So ANA is seen in SLE. Again, I said it's autoimmune, so there's autoantibodies. There's a few to remember. There's anti-double-stranded DNA. This is specific. Anti-Smith, also specific. Anti-histone. That is seen in drug-induced lupus. And finally, you have anti-phospholipid antibodies, which I'll talk about later. So all of these are pretty specific. Um, Anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith specific in general, anti-histone in drug-induced lupus. So remember, you can have drug-induced lupus, or you can just have lupus from anything else. Uh, and then finally, anti-phospholipid antibodies. Uh, you can also have neurological symptoms such as Caesar, Caesar, psychosis, malar rash we talked about, which I bolded because it's so characteristic and it's diagnostic. And the test question is pretty much diagnostic. Um, you can also have a discoid rash. Um, that's a different type of rash. Finally, additional symptom is endocarditis. Um, so that's inflammation of the endocardium, so the inner lining of the heart, including the valves. That's a specific one. It's called Lehman Sachs endocarditis. Um, and you can just remember that because SLD has L LSE. So very simple, very easy. Thank you. And Lehman Sachs endocarditis is... Usually endocarditis is associated with bacteria, but this one is not. This is there's verrucous vegetation that will end up growing on your, on your valves. And that's going to cause inflammation. So again, clinical features, classic presentation. Remember, what was that? Remember, it's that malar rash, young female, some inflammatory symptoms like a fever, arthritis, classically African-American. And if you want to remember the other symptoms, I suggest using a mnemonic. Um, 
for this one I have taught you so brain MD you may also try first aid. Now I'm going to talk about a related topic which is antiphospholipid syndrome. Remember we said how the SLA patients may have antiphospholipid antibodies because this, antiphos um, this is a different disorder syndrome but it's commonly seen with SLE. So patients without SLE may also have this but it's often seen with patients with SLE. Again you have um, these those antiphospholipid antibodies, and those are pro-coagulatory, so they they promote formation of blood clots. So um, when you have these antibodies, you are hypercoagulable. When you form blood clots, it's not good. So what can happen is you can have pretty much blood clots anywhere. So you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of um, this um, pathology from resulting from blood clots. Um, if you can think of any, try to think of them now. I want to list them out now. So in the in the brain, if you get blood clots, you're gonna get a stroke. In your your deep veins of your legs, you're gonna get a deep vein thrombosis, um, and that can go to your lungs, and pulmonary embolism. And the other classic thing is you're gonna see recurrent miscarriages. So it's a patient. So again, you're gonna see that young middle-aged woman, younger woman, here mis recurrent miscarriages. You're thinking antiphospholipid syndrome because you're gonna get that uh, blood clots going to the placental vessels blocking the placental vessels, which is how the, ba the baby gets blood. baby doesn't get blood, it dies. Miscarriage. So the way you diagnose it, this is positive antiphospholipid antibodies, and um, that's also, this term encompasses multiple ones. So there's three to know of. Uh, this is a little bit lower yield, but you can just remember it anyway. It helps you get um, and those little extra points. Lupus anticoagulant. This leads to a paradoxically prolonged PTT. So if you don't remember, if, um, if you haven't learned heme yet, um, a long PTT, a uh, prolonged PTT usually means that you are um, l decreased coagulation, usually. But in this disease, lupus anticoagulant prolongs it, but you're actually at hypercoagulable state. So that's why it's called paradoxal. Next is anticardiolipin antibody. This is significant because it can cause a false positive test for syphilis. So that's, it might be testable, it might not be. But this patient might test positive for syphilis when they really don't because that test will, will mistakenly um, uh, recognize the anticardiolipin antibody. Finally, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies. So to treat this, remember the whole problem is you're hypercoagulable. So you treat it with system, systemic anticoagulation, such as heparin. So again, this is a hypercoagulable state due to the, all those antibodies. You get a lot of um, co coagulopathies, coagulop um, coagulopathic diseases. That's probably not even a word. All right, so that's it for SLE and antiphospholipid syndrome.